And then I always have this little focus this pressure on me as a kid, even though know, uh, every day I feel like I have, I have to play well and you know, play as hard as I can. I can't take any games for granted. And I always had that pressure coming home at night. So my mom asked me what happened in a, you know, in a bad game. My godfather asked me what, why I didn't play so well. You know, just having that little pressure, I guess, stayed with me since a kid all the way up to, to today. Just wanted to play well this game. Just wanted to give him my all and, and practice and shoot around and workouts and then, when you have an off game now, does your mom still? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Especially now. <laughs> I take care of that stuff on my own now, but um, it's cool to have, you know, that type of, I want to call it fear because that's such a dangerous word, but it's like, uh, I don't know, I guess that you don't want to be satisfied or content. You just want to just keep going and see what happens at the end of the road. It seems like in this series, first two games at least, Draymond hasn't been able to get kind of in the middle of the court. They're either playing five out or they got Capella and he's got to stay with them. Is there anything that you guys can do around Draymond to help him maybe freelance a little bit more or is it just a matter of him figuring out the spacing of this team? They are smart enough to figure it out, I think. Uh, he knows when to go and when to stay home. And that's just a series. I mean, it's not, every series is not going to be the same. We might have to be, not play different ways individually. Yeah. I think Draymond is so good at adapting to any system, any style throughout his career, especially in the playoffs. He's figuring out, all right, I might need to guide this guy a little closer. I might help off a little bit more. It's just on Draymond uh, to figure that out. And we just kind of, you know, all figure it out on our own and it's run together well. So uh, I think Draymond is smart enough to adjust the future. Yeah, talking about Draymond's intellect and just how smart he is and what a leader he is. A few games ago in the other series, he kind of texted him overnight, and you know, kind of you woke up to the text in the morning. What kind of impact does that kind of leadership have, and what kind of stuff did he say in that text? Uh, well, that, that text isn't the reason why I came out and played that way. Uh, I mean, it was definitely helpful, but as I had already planned uh, on doing that before the text came to before I was asleep that night. So, uh, but to have somebody that kind of know what you're thinking and kind of feel your vibe, because I think through our practice that day, he kind of felt my vibe a little bit on how angry I was at myself. And it's good when your teammates kind of know who you are without even having a like, real communication, you know, just through vibes and energy. So, um, I appreciated that more so than anything. Be a guest of being who you are. I had planned on doing that, but obviously, I had Draymond there meant, to, meant a lot to as far as just like that character part of it. What is it about him and his personality that allows him to be, to, to, to communicate that way so directly with someone like you who's at the top of your game? I just think that empowerment starts from the, from the top, you know, from the, so make up all the way down to the players is that everybody feels like they have their, their own bullshit. Draymond worked his way up to having a, a loud voice as far as, you know, stuff we need to do basketball for. This is his, his opinion on things, his basketball knowledge on things. I think coaches hurt because everybody speaks up. You know, Draymond takes advantage of it. Um, and it's, every time he speaks, it's impactful for him to help himself. But, uh, that's his goal. That's what he needs to decide to take on in this team. Kevin, in order for you to do what you do right after night, how much of that is just having like such a strong sense of confidence and like belief in yourself and like not letting anything else outside noise or anything like affect you? I think it's more so just the love of the game. Um, just wanting to play, just having a good time playing. And uh, the trial and error of the game is what I really enjoy the most. Um, doing something well um, and then not doing something well and trying to figure out how, how you can turn that into a strength. Uh, I think that's something that I always try to focus on the most of the basketball club. It's allowed me to get this far. Uh, so I'm going to continue just keeping an open book with myself as a player, see how far I can take it, and take a little bit of risk as well. So I just think just playing a game within a game has allowed me to be confident out there. And just my love of the game has allowed me to be all out there as well. Kevin, after you guys came out and really dominated and played so great in game one, how do you explain the turnovers, the lack of focus, and the reasons that you lost the second game? Oh, just, I mean, you said it, I mean, turnovers, you know, defensive breakdowns, that stuff, it just comes down to just focus. Where do we want to focus on these time down? I think uh, 
we just played this first last game. And against a great team like that, especially a Destin team with down 1-0 on their home floor, we knew they were going to come out with that energy. So you know, we can't fade in and out of focus. Uh, when we're trying to win a championship, especially against a uh, championship kind of ball club like the Rockets. So I just think we had too many possessions where we went from playing great defense to three or four possessions, not playing good defense. Those possessions add up. Six, seven, eight point runs. Well, uh, you're down 10, 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. So it's, it, all it takes a couple inches of guys to and a couple of to turn a se- season or a series around or just a game. So, uh, small details are important. Is it harder to deal with guys like PJ and Trevor and PG getting theirs as opposed to James and, and Chris? Because in a sense, it almost looks like you know, James and Chris can get theirs anyway. We just want to play good defense. Uh, no matter who has the ball, uh, we're not just saying, like, you know, CP, James, let's go on the points. And uh, we're just trying to, whoever gets the ball at that time, we want to make sure we play good defense and uh, just make it tough for guys. We want Eric Boyd to the score, six man of the year. James, CP, you know what they do. PJ Tucker can shoot the ball, Tim the world and shit. So um, we just about who, if they get the ball, just trying to take away what they like to do best. And, you know, if they make a tough shot on you, they run back down the court, you know, just keep grinding. I think uh, we do that will be fun. You know that's easier said than done. PJ and Trevor, you know what they want to do, basically. They want to stay in the corner and get that. Is it hard to resist helping off when James went to the basket to slide in towards the collapse towards James a little bit? Oh, yeah, just not sure. That's just the nature of basketball. Just find someone who can help out as much as you can. Uh, I think you got to do a good job second and third. Uh, after getting back out to the shooting sometimes, and action out on the backside, and also standing in front of the ball. So, I think that's all the stuff that uh, we can get better at and uh, something that uh, all the players kind of know uh, what needs to be done in that area on the part of defense and that's just communicating being physical, playing hard, and uh, let's see what happens. After missing Steph six weeks, said Steve that, um, said that maybe Steph has lost some rhythm. I don't think so. What do you, what do you, how do you explain his play in this series? So? I don't think so, no. I think, uh, they're switching out a lot, and they're doing a solid job of switching out. I think they're doing a good job of dropping to the rim. They may have missed a few threes, you know, but, you know, you worry about mysteries and Steph Curry. I mean, so at some point, you know, these teams just keep being aggressive, uh, keep fighting over screens, playing good defense, getting to the paint. Just playing, just keeping themselves, like, just playing slow, be fine. I don't, I don't think anything's lingering from the injury or nothing. I just, I just said that. Uh, a couple shots went in and out, and he made a couple of those threes that were open. We're talking about a different night. We're talking about a different place. So it's like, it's a make or miss league. And, and when Steph misses a shot, everybody everybody gets up in arms about it. But you know, that's how great he is. You know, so many people expect him to make every single shot. But you know, sometimes it doesn't happen. So he, but he continued to keep fighting at 7 rebounds, 7 assists. You know, his players tell off on the defensive end, man, it's a set, you know, so I'm not going to knock him out in one game, you know, so it's, it's bad games happen throughout, you know, playoff series, throughout the season, throughout his career, you know, so just move on and get, keep getting better and see what happens. You've also said, you know, you have a couple of times, you get one or two, and then you could go and make them in bunches, and I'm sure you expect that soon. Uh, I know I know the last, next couple of days is going to be about stuff struggling to shoot the ball, but that's the last thing I worry about. So it's like, you know, I guess he's got so much confidence in him on the offensive side of the basketball. Um, and as far as shooting the ball, like, I'm, I, mean, I look at him, I said this way before you guys said that he was the best shooter ever. So it's like, I got confidence in him. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I think we all do. You know, all the fans, all the players, we all do. So, you got good looks last game. Some, I mean, all of them were great shots. Uh, but sometimes they don't go away. And I know Steph is confident always. So, see him working that game right now. Playing for the next game. That's what you need to have a player do. That's what I mean. I mean, he can easily come back and hit a bunch in a row as, as we Yeah, but just to talk to him on the offensive side of the ball, let's okay. get out of here. Okay. Who are we even worried about? He doesn't make shots. He, can, he, got, he does other things. He can help him out with the team. So it's like, man, I'm, I'm confident, man. I got the almost, you know, especially in Steph. So much confidence in him. Um, it's 
have pressure uh, putting on them. Just stuff that I just. As a teammate, I expect to have the greatness out of them. I think that's not okay. everybody should look at. So. Steve said you guys have bounced back from a tough loss because of something in, in here. You put his hand on his heart from the way you guys have been resilient, you know, after a not so great game. I think when we lose basketball games, like you said, it is a lack of focus sometimes. We totally locked in on each possession and know we have to be a tough team to beat. So when we lose the game and we watch the film, it's just like, oh man, we missed the box out. So we turned the ball over. We didn't rebound. Or we didn't get off the shooters or we didn't drive. We didn't run hard enough. It's like stuff that we can control. So it's like, you know, we can control it there. It's just the reason why we bounce back is because we start thinking about those things and that's the stuff that we didn't do so well. And then that's when we started having our Good games after a loss. Small stuff that we forget about. And while we lose, uh, it's the stuff that we focus on next game and we win. So uh, we got to be focused. Jim Lambert, thank you. Last question. Jim Lambert, three months left. Thanks, Owen. You got to be more. What is the hardest? Nothing at all. I'm going to keep being me. They're going off like the same mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that's done that with kids, you know what I'm saying? She's going to make the best of them from us. Uh, I love her like she's my mom, so it's all good, you know what I'm saying? I understand where that stuff comes from, but I'm going to keep being me at the end of the day. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I never know. It's very, very strange. <laughs> <laughs>